Now, I'll give you a few examples of that. Freedom of speech. I've heard Sargon of Akkad say that he's a freedom of speech absolutist. And I would say that that's a ridiculous position to hold. It simply is a ridiculous position to hold. The reason why is because if you say it's a, if you're an absolutist, the word absolute indicates that you actually would, you would endorse something like, for example, someone revealing the secrets, and these are the classical um, examples, of a poison gas, a new poison gas, putting it on the internet. Yeah. Or let's even say, what about child pornography? Because freedom of speech and freedom of expression are sometimes interchangeable. What about, for instance, what about, for instance, I mean, we just saw a kid walking by now. Yeah. What if someone in a, in a school context was racist to a child and was bullying a child using freedom of speech as a guise? Most people in society will say that's not acceptable. This is one of the problems is that, you know, you've given you know, individuals like that. So Jordan Peterson, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't involve him in, in this side of things, but you've got people with, you know, people that you can label as right wing, whether or not you call it far right or, you know, however that's your choice. But right wing nationalists who have latched on to freedom of speech as Absolutely. an excuse. Before yeah. that, that wasn't their motive. Their motive has always been a kind of a protectionist nationalist stance. Yeah. And they're using freedom of speech because it's it's a hot topic and you can almost use that to legitimise Absolutely. Like extremist views. And everyone knows, so every democratic, civilised, and I yeah. put that, society has certain uh, limitations, for example, libel, plagiarism, copyright, trademarking. All of these are ki are embedded in the social infrastructure. And, and to be honest with you, they haven't tackled that. They talk freedom of speech, freedom of speech. The kind of freedom of speech Jordan Peterson talks about is the one, is the kind of freedom of speech that leads to the pursuit of truth, the kind of freedom of speech that J.S. Mill talks about. But that kind of freedom of speech is different to the, 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 the absolutist freedom of speech, potentially, that uh, Sargon of Akkabi could be talking about. The point being is that they use these slogans, these post-enlightenment dogmatic slogans, and I'm not saying just because it's dogmatic, it's wrong, but they use those slogans in order to kind of preach to the choir, as it were, in my opinion. The Western choir, that have already uh, accepted the democratic principle that there are no disadvantages or, or, or that democracy, democracy or liberalism is an ultimate truth of some sorts, or you, t you know, the ideal philosophy that we should be living by. And they're preaching to that particular choir. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So that's, that's what I think. The point being is what, what needs to be challenged is the presuppositions. Now, when we have a discussion, and it has to be frank, we have to look at, for example, those guys. I've, I've mentioned those two because they're quite popular, yeah. but also because they're quite critical of Islam. Yeah. I started off by saying that their criticism of Islam is valid. But on what, or on what premise? On the premise that they accept philosophical liberalism as the truth. For example, 